This is the Hunky Vape News Drop, giving you a single informative news article to keep you up to date on vaping news while respecting your time. Today's article, published in Business Tech, titled Push for New E-Cigarette and Smoking Laws in South Africa, is the first of many because of the World Health Organization's initiative to ban most vapes, with a special emphasis on open tank systems. This article has been puppet published by the Daily Star, Love Africa News, Africa Tobacco Control Alliance, and many others. So, if you haven't signed the CAFRA org petition to the World Health Organization, there's a link in the description below. There's also a link to a study which documents that electronic cigarettes are more effective for smoking cessation than other nicotine replacement therapies. Anyway, Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this was just published today. Push for new e-cigarette and smoking laws in South Africa. You know, ever since the World Health Organization decided that they were going to focus their efforts on eliminating vaping, these articles from different locations all around the world just keep mounting up. Let's take a look at this one published in Business Tech. Push for new e-cigarette and smoking laws in South Africa. Public health researchers have called on the government to pass the Control of Tobacco and Electronic Delivery Systems Bill into law. The bill is expected to further regulate the use, marketing, and sales of electronic cigarettes or vapes in South Africa, with these products currently operating in a legislative vacuum. Yeah, that's what they're calling it, a legislative vacuum. In a report published by the Africa Center for Tobacco Industry Monitoring and Policy Research, the researchers said that it is now two years since the bill was closed for public comments. During this time, the electronic cigarette industry, currently largely unregulated, has further taken hold in South Africa. While the tobacco and the electronic cigarette industry likes to position e-cigarettes as cessation aids because they are, the limited effectiveness of these products for long-term quitting, the health harms associated with usage, and the industry's clear and targeted marketing of youth are facts which are conveniently omitted from their narrative because it's a load of fucking bullshit. <laughs> the limited effectiveness of these products for long-term quitting? Where are they coming up with that information? Do they have a study to back that up? Oh no, because they're going to tell you that... Uh, product hasn't been around long enough to have long-term results. So you can't make a statement about long-term consequences or effectiveness over the long-term because it hasn't been around long enough. I mean, yeah, it's been around for 10 years and yeah, there are studies that show how effective it is, but they're not gonna pay attention to those. The health harms associated with usage, you mean the health benefits of usage? and the industry's clear and targeted marketing to youth. No, there are players in the marketplace that have played to youth, but as a broad stroke, brush stroke, paint brush, you can't make statements like that because they're bold faced lies. Let's continue on. The series of recently published studies conducted by the ATIM University of Pretoria and the South African Medical Research Council assessed local e-cigarette use, evaluated the effectiveness of e-cigarettes as cessation aids, and analyzed the cost of e-cigarette usage using multiple data sources, including two large population level surveys. Uh-huh. How about a link to this survey study that you did? Geospatial mapping was also used to understand the distribution of vape shops across South Africa and how this may impact youth usage. 
A key finding from one of the studies was the substantial prevalence of electronic cigarette use by South Africans older than 16 years. Care to tell us how many of these users smoke tobacco until you banned it? No, you're going to leave that part out, aren't you? Whoops. Overall, 2.71% of adults, translating to 1.09 million people, use electronic cigarettes daily or occasionally during 2018. Wow. 2018? Wow. What's today's date? <laughs> 2021. Uh, I don't think that you're looking at accurate information, are you now? <laughs> of course not because that doesn't further your agenda. <laughs> Majority of current e-cigarette users, 97.5% were concurrently regular smoking cigarettes. Whoops. Well, they can't do that now because you banned that too. Whoops. In another study, forever established smokers of combustible tobacco products who had tried to quit, e-cigarette use was associated with higher likelihood of short-term but not long-term quitting. That's a bold-faced lie, too. A cost study revealed that contrary to claims made by e-cigarette manufacturers, what claims? Care to, like, hyperlink that? No, you're not going to, because there aren't any. Using electronic cigarettes is more expensive than smoking cigarettes when compared daily users of both products over a one-year period. Get fucked. That's not true either. Oh, Jesus. Unless you factor in how they're being taxed. Wow. To the final cost of the product. Wah, wah, wah. Untaxed for more than a decade in South Africa, electronic cigarettes will only be taxed from this year at a rate of 75%. No, that's a bit of a problem. Oh, of the tax on tobacco? That's a load of shit. This will likely reduce initiation by youth and provide additional revenue to cover the health and economic harms they cause while contributing to funding the national health insurance. More bullshit propaganda. And I thought this was going to be a dull day. Other changes. In October 2020, the Department of Health said that it had hoped to present the control of tobacco products and electronic delivery systems bill to President Zaire Ramposa's cabinet by the end of 2020. A deadline which has not come and gone. <laughs> Government also wants to introduce further restrictions around the smoking of cigarettes in public places. Yeah? That's already been implemented. Oh, but they're going to leave that part out, aren't they? Whoops! The current smoking laws ban smoking in public places. Oh, so you admitted that the ban's already in place. Whoops. But allow for designated smoking areas in places like bars, taverns, and restaurants, provided that they do not take more than 25% of the revenue. Lawmakers want to change this to 100% prohibition of smoking in all public areas. Mm. Prohibition does not work. All you do is relegate things to the black market, to the deep cavernous alleyways where the rest of the black market lives. But you don't care because you're just going to get high and mighty, sit up on your throne and tell people the Puritan way of life. Wow. The department noted that smoking among adults has reduced from 32% in 1992 to 18% in 2012. More recent studies have shown that this number has since increased to more than 21%. Uh-huh. So you're telling me that since you prohibited tobacco, the rates have increased since it's been available on the black market. Whoops. Interesting. Whoops. Almost as interesting as the fact you left that out, that it's already been banned. They completely banned it because of COVID. But you're not going to talk about that. Whoops. 
Data from the latest National Income Dynamics Coronavirus Rapid Mobile Survey estimates that there were approximately 6.7 million adult cigarette smokers aged 18 and over in South Africa before the start of the lockdown. Wow. Yeah? Get fucked. How about new? So that's where the article ends? Good news, everyone. You banned it. It was found to be unconstitutional, and that didn't affect... The rates of smoking? Whoops. I find that very hard to believe. Whoops. And if you think you can push this propaganda and people are going to believe it, you're highly mistaken and you should focus your energy and effort somewhere else. Game over, yeah. That's it for now. Have a great day.